In this edition of In the Trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics, coming to you from our outstanding studios as always, we catch up with the ultimate team leader, ultimate team player, Orlando Brown. He's already working out every day on his functional football strength. This guy's ready to roll. He talks about players that he's studied tape on at the collegiate level. Talks about some of his offensive tackles that he's impressed with that might be available to the Bengals in the draft. He talks about some of his teammates that the Bengals have acquired in veteran free agency. Talks about guys that he had played with before. You know, you got a safety, Geno Stone, former teammate with the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, we talk about Trent Brown, like the UPS commercial. What's Brown done for you? Twin Brown Towers, baby. And Brown at the running back position. We talk about all that. I'll tell you, after spending some time with Orlando Brown, the offseason can't go by fast enough. You're going to love it. Appreciate you taking time out of your day to join us in the trenches with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics. As always, we're coming to you from our unbelievable studios provided by First Star Logistics, and we have an unbelievably amazing guest with us today. This guy, I have a tremendous amount of respect for, not only as a football player, I mean, he's a Pro Bowl football player, but he is an unbelievable human being, and I'm speaking of Orlando Brown. Big man, thanks for joining us. Yes, sir. I appreciate you having me on. So, how's the offseason going at this point in time? Does the body feel pretty good? Body feels great, man. Uh, my body feels great. Um, I've just been, been spending a ton of time developing – you know, my strength to a, to a different level. And I think that's something that's going to help my game out. Something that I've been working with the strength coaches on pretty much all off season, man. I didn't take too much time off. Um, and I just, just been here in Cincinnati grinding. I, uh, I'm getting to know the city a little bit more, man. I'm loving it. You know, it's interesting. Uh, you, you lift weights growing up and then you get to a football program where you have a strength coach. that's like, all right, now I'm going to start doing some things with you that will help your functional football strength. You know, yep. not necessarily what you did, how much can you bench press, how much can you curl, you know, all that. I'm going to be yep. working with your core, you know, your core, your hips, where it's going to help your functional football strength. Is that the kind of thing you're talking about? You're working that part of it big time? That's exactly, exactly what I'm talking about. And so that that's the uh, most important part for me this year was getting functionally strong. And I feel like there were certain areas that I lacked uh, last year uh, and even previous years before that. Um, in terms of functional strength, because I've spent so much time on uh, working on my flexibility in my ankles, my feet, my toes, my calf, uh, you know, stretching that, my hip mobility, um, you know, all of those different things that help you, uh, you know, trunk and, and core strength, all those different things that help you uh, move better and all that, all that different stuff, things that I lacked for a while. And so I feel like I kind of got it to a point where I was as flexible as can be, but not necessarily functionally strong in those positions. And so that's really just uh, how I've attacked this offseason is, you know, I've got my weight set where, I, where I've been at, you know, for the last few years. I'm as flexible as I've ever been in my life. And then from here, it's just about getting functionally strong in this body. I'll tell you, though, to be at the stage you're at in your career and to go through all you've gone through in terms of contact and all that, to still have that kind of flexibility, man, you've yeah. worked at it now. That, that's that's something to be proud of big time. Yeah, yeah you know, it's, it's the, that's kind of, you know, and you played, you know, it, it's like one of the unspoken things about uh, the sport is, you know, how what you put in is what you get out. And so yep. – uh, I've been fortunate to have uh, a really good team around me in, in terms of the people that work on my body. Uh, you know, shout out my guy, Dave. He lives in Arizona. He comes to see me pretty much once a week in season. And, you know, he's doing some type of manual therapy that allows me to uh, go out there and perform at a high level. Boy, uh, you're excited about uh, getting back after it. Uh, let's talk about last season. <laughs> I mean, you, you, yep. you, you, you lose Joe Burrow, which, yep. I mean, the two seasons that Joe Burrow's played a full season, you went to the Super Bowl and you played yep. the AFC Championship game. I mean, obviously, yeah. that's a big deal. Uh, but it unfortunately, is. he's had some injuries in the other years. You know, it, it hadn't worked out that way. But, boy, last year, to go 9-8 and eight, uh, and, and uh, you know, you, you, have a, you have a quarterback – Jake Browning step up and play, play his tail off. Really, I mean, I think you've got the best quarterback room 
in football with number one and number two quarterback. Uh, and, and last year, the way you guys played, when Joe went down and Jake, you know, was the guy, what what went on? What How did you guys handle that? How did you say, we're going to finish the way we, we did finish? Yeah. Well, you know, it, we still came up short. We finished a little bit above 500. Obviously, I yep. think it was nine and eight. Yep. Um, but, man, we, we really obviously wanted to, you know, get in the dance, get in the playoffs. And so uh, the mindset was going to be that through and through. And so I feel like Jake came in, did a great job with his confidence and showing his pre- preparation and how prepared he was for uh, these games and, and battles that we experienced. And uh, we kind of, you know, fed off that energy as a team. And normally, you know, I, I say in the NFL, you know, you can only go as far as your quarterback goes. And I think Jake came in, man, and did a great job in terms of just his quarterback approach, you know, trying to be the best version of his self, which allowed the team to have that confidence. The entire AFC North finished above 500. Unbelievable. One game out of the playoffs. You finished just one game, you know, out of the playoffs. It was it was on the table until the very conclusion of the season. I I, yeah. I thought everybody performed, uh, you know, incredibly well. Now here, the off season, <clears throat> been through the the combine. You know, the, all the all the guys are out at the combine, the underwear Olympics. You know, doing their thing. And yeah. you know, I, I've got I've got mixed feelings about the combine. I know you probably have. <laughs> Mixed feelings about the combine as well. I do. <laughs> tell, tell us about your combine experience a little bit. Here's a guy. Here's a guy that is is one of the best in the game. You know, is is tracking for a Hall of Fame career and and the stupid combine. I mean, yeah. <laughs> now tell us I, about that story. Tell us about that. I, story. I know, man. I know it's uh, you know, I I, I hate that that uh even happened. You know yeah. what I mean? No, I, I hear guess you. I, I have full control over, it, but um. You know, for me, I, I've really enjoyed the meetings. I enjoy, yeah. enjoyed the interviews, being able to show off my football IQ, my personality, um, thinking under pressure, all those different types of things. I enjoyed I enjoyed that part of it. Uh, where, where I did struggle, obviously, was the physical part. And any team that I met with, anybody that I met with there that asked me how I was going to test, where my bench, the only thing I was wrong about was my bench press. I, I had been doing 18 to 20 the whole time. I hit 14 there. Um, but in terms of my 40, that was, I mean, around where it was at. I mean, it was a, it was a five, seven, five, six, um, you know, which I think offic- officially it was a five, seven something, but my first rep was a, definitely a five, eight, five. And it felt like it, uh, <laughs> my on field, <laughs> my on field workouts weren't great, but, um, you know, it was it was such a pivotal point for me in my career, man. It was it was very humbling because, you know, I kind of obviously I came in the league with somewhat of a bad taste in my mouth uh, for that. I've got a huge chip on my shoulder being a third round pick at that point. And then yep. on top of that, man, they they drafted me to to the hometown. And so, man, I, I had I put, I'm one to put immense amount of pressure on myself and, uh, you know, being drafted to Baltimore after all of that happens after coming in having to earn that right tackle job and, and being able to earn that uh, in due time. And, and, you know, the rest is history. I know you're a football uh, junkie. You really study the game. I mean, you study a lot of tape of, of a lot of players. How about the collegiate game? Is, is there any um, offensive lineman coming out of college that, uh, that you've seen play a few times and you're like, man, I, I like this guy's game. Yeah. Yeah. No, man. I mean, I think, uh, your heavy hitters are your heavy hitters. I, my, my favorite player in the draft, just in terms of turning on the film and watching him, is J.C. Latham. I really like the way that he plays uh, from Alabama. Yep. I just feel like he's, you know, he's he's very – he's NFL ready. You know, when, when I watch film on a college guy and, you know, I'm looking and thinking about his transition to this level, I want to see – how consistent his footwork and hand placement is. How is he against the elite of the elites, against the sorriest, sorriest players in college? You know, how does he play? And so uh, J.C. Latham is a guy that really sticks out to me in terms of consistency. You know, no matter who he's played, he's been the same player. And I think uh, – I don't think he has any red flags. I feel like he's probably one of the more consistent guys. Uh, Joe All out of Notre Dame is a close two. You know, he's – uh, another guy that's a really special talent, super tall. Uh, I know he's not super long, but I mean, when you're when you've got the height, that helps. You know, in terms of uh, the lack the lack of arm length, I don't think it'll necessarily have an effect on him. And on top of that, he's got great feet, 
And, you know, he seems to have a very strong lower body, which are two important things coming to this level, man. If you can handle the bull rush and move your feet, you'll be able to at least do this for six or seven years. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I really like his game. Um, I'm trying to think of some other guys that come to mind. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's Pat, Patrick Paul out of Houston, I think, is, is another name. I, I really like him. Mm-hmm. Um there's one guy I haven't watched yet. There is a, a tackle at Duke I haven't watched yet, but but I I think he's a pretty good player too, from what I hear. Yeah, you've uh, you've done a little bit of uh, a little <laughs> bit of work on that on that next level. You know, you you talk yeah. about something though. Everybody talks about in in sports in general, the great athletes. It starts with your feet, ends with your hands. If you have yeah. really good feet and really good hands, you're going to be able to function at a high level, whatever sport it is. You know, yeah. if it's uh, you know if it if if it's baseball. Uh, if, it, if it's basketball, I mean, your feet are the, are the primary first thing, you know, and then you have to be able to have hands and finish. Same thing yes. with linemen. Your feet have oh, to yeah. get you in position. You finish with your hands to punch and all that. If you have good feet and good hands, you can play this game, right? Oh, absolutely, man. Absolutely. And and that's, you know, really what it comes down to, uh, especially in today's game up front, man, is, you know, are you going to be able to have confidence in your footwork, uh, when you're playing those really good rushers, you know yep. what I mean? And yep. and trust your feet to take you where your hands are supposed to be. Yeah, no yeah. doubt. No doubt. Oh, yeah. All right, so let's talk about uh, the, the old commercial. What, <laughs> what, can, what can Brown do for you? Remember that commercial? <laughs> UPS, UPS, right? What is yeah, <laughs> what can Brown do for you? you can, Brown can do a lot for the Bengals, man. You got one at running back. You got two tackles. You have the twin Brown Towers now at the yeah. tackle positions, man. I mean, both six foot, eight inch, just prime beef, you know, guys at the at the tackle spots. What do you think about uh, Trent Brown? I mean, here's a guy. Uh, he he comes out out of college, drafted in the seventh round by the 49ers. And, and both you guys are Super Bowl champions. Both of you guys have played in the Pro Bowl. <laughs> mm-hmm. Telling you what, man, twin towers like that, twin brown towers like that. How about this offensive line? Two tackles at 6'8". Volson's approaching 6'7". Cap yeah. is probably <laughs> close to 6'6". Unbelievable. Yeah. And yeah. and all of you, you, you got four Super Bowl champions. Yep. You, got, you got you at left tackle. You got Karras at center. Cap at right guard. And Trent Brown, or four Super Bowl yeah. champions in the Cincinnati Bengals offensive line. That's what it's all about is winning the – Winning the championship, you guys know what it takes, man. I'm pumped for these guys. I'm pumped for you guys, yeah, man. Yeah, no, I'm excited too, man. I think Trent's going to be a great addition. Uh, I really like what he brings in terms of uh, natural ability and, you know, kind of who he's been already. And that's, you know, I think the thing in free agency when you're these teams, you want to make sure you're getting the right guy for your system and, you know, you kind of know what you're getting. You know, you want to know what you're getting. And, uh I think he's 31 years old, maybe just turned 31 years old. And last year was one of the best years of his career. And so, man, I think, you know, we're getting a guy that's an elite pass protector. You know, that's one of the best things he does is is blocks one-on-one uh, amazingly against really good right. talent, no matter who it is. And so right. we, we pass the ball 40-plus 40, 40 times a game often, you know, and, and uh, I think that'll play to his strengths and what he and, can do in the run game too. Yeah, and, and in this division – with, with, oh, yeah, you know, exactly. Garrett, with Watt, with these, you know, and it's not, they don't just have one pass rusher. They've got, yeah. you know, multiple Good. pass rushers, man, to have, to have yeah. talent like you guys have up front, you got to have it, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely, man. And and that's what, you know, it takes to, to win the Super Bowl. That's what it takes to win these big playoff games is, you know, having book in tackles, having quality quarterback play, having a really good receiver, um, you know, and a good pass rush. I mean, all those those are you know some of the most important uh, you know factors into to winning a championship. And and I look at both you guys, you know, six eight. He's six eight, three hundred and seventy pounds. Do you think? Oh man, he's to, man. His feet are really good. He's got oh, good amazing. feet. Good hands. You have great feet, good hands. I mean, it's like that that proves the point we were just making earlier. I mean, it's it's all about you know, no matter how big you are. If you can't get there, if your feet yeah. won't get you there and allow you to use your hands and all your body strength and everything to finish it, doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, doesn't matter. yeah, man, exactly, exactly. And so, you know, when when you've got when you got guys like Trent Brown or myself who are uh, extremely tall, long human beings um, yep. that are also heavy, you know, it's it's a lot harder and a lot more difficult to be able to do that. But uh, man, you learn to train. Uh, yourself through muscle memory. And that's really all football is, is muscle memory because uh, 
you know, when you're on this level and I'm in the heat of a moment, I'm not thinking about my footwork. I'm not thinking right. about my hands. It just happens. You know what I mean? Yep. And so, yep. uh, Maybe it wasn't always like that in high school when I when I started taking it serious, but uh, that's what it comes down to. And so, man, I think I think man, me and Chen are going to be great. You know, one of the best tackle duos in the league. I agree. I'm excited, yeah. man. Can't me wait too. to watch the big boys do on the edge get it oh, done. Oh yeah. So, uh, free agency. You lose a couple of you know great players, tremendous leaders, Joe Mixon and uh, Cheeto. Yeah. Um, yeah. Joe Mixon, of course, you know fan favorite. Teammates love yeah. him. Great team leader. Cheeto, same way. Great team yeah. leader. But you you have a lot of leaders on this football team. And mm-hmm. uh, and Zach Moss at the running back position. Man, I watched this guy on tape. And so, you know, I'm like, Zach, you're a perfect fit for the inside-outside zone and the gap scheme. He goes, well, man, that's that's basically what I've run. And I look yeah. at him at 5'9", 200 and whatever pounds against this big offensive line, hiding behind you guys. And the blocks you make, he's he's out of nowhere on people, and he runs yeah. with that body. You know, five foot nine inch body with a good lean. He's trying to tackle a pectoral and a quadricep. I'm telling you, <laughs> running game could be awesome. It is. It is. It's going to be great, man. You know, uh, Joe Mix is you know obviously close to me, and you know, yeah. just because of our ties at Oklahoma and everything. Right. I mean, we literally been knowing each other since we we're seventeen years old, and so yep. uh, you know, man, that's that's literal family. But. Um, Sometimes, man, the the thing about the sport on this level too is the business. You know, that's that's kind of one of the things that comes with it. It's unfortunate, but uh, that's that's just where today's NFL is. But I think I think Zach Moss is going to come in and be great for us uh, yeah. in terms of uh, a scheme fit, what he can do in the gun, uh, his lateral quickness, uh, his explosive like ability, and what he's kind of done on so many few carries. You already know what he's going to do, you know, in this type of position, and so. Um, when you have a running back like Zach, I mean, man, I think I think it's going to be great. You know, he's he's an elite. He's an elite. He's a really good pass protector uh, for a running back. Yep. Uh, you know, which is always a plus as well. And so, um, you know, we've they got a three down back, and you know they were able to do it for I think four million dollars a year, man. And and I think Zach is going to come here and be one of the better better running backs in the league, and and show why. No, you you mentioned the the uh, blitz pickup and his blocking ability. Uh, yeah. I've caught up with him, and, and, and you know he talked about being a linebacker till he was a senior in high school, and then he played just running back. He was both up until his senior. So that linebacker mentality, man, you know he, he'll do the blue collar stuff. He'll get his nose dirty. I love the toughness of the guy. You know, I mean he he's yeah. one of those guys that uh, you know he'll take on any task. Uh, doesn't matter anything yeah. to help the team win, right? Yeah, and that's that's important too, man. Like you know, when when we're uh, installing a play, or you know, your offensive coordinator is is putting together a game plan, uh, having someone like that, I mean, it helps everybody out. No doubt. All right, so on the defensive side of things, at the safety position, Geno oh, yeah. Stone out of Baltimore. If there's yeah. anybody that I wanted to talk about about Geno Stone, because I'm hearing all this, man, unbelievably smart. Tremendous football IQ, green dot guy in the huddle. He's the guy you want to make, you know, the calls come to him and he makes the call and then he makes calls from the back end. This guy yeah. sounds like a football savant. Is he that kind of guy? He is. He is. Uh, another, uh, I think, similar story to mine in a sense of, uh, I think he kind of comes in the league with a bad taste in his mouth, you know, being a seventh round pick. And uh, he's kind of always had the ability and ball skills. One of the reasons that the Ravens drafted him, I know he was still a seventh round pick, but I think that more so had to do with uh, some of his uh, testing numbers or his height and size or whatever that may have been. So he's come in with a chip on his shoulder and uh, he's kind of had to earn his way all the way through and through. And so Gino was someone as a rookie that I remember seeing with uh, Matt Judon, Anthony Levine, um, you know, Tony Jefferson uh, at 6 a.m. in the weight room uh, with these with these veterans, these guys that are, you know, in completely different, uh, I guess you could say, times and, and a lot older uh, than, than he was at the time, maybe about 10 right, years. And right. so he's training with these men um, every morning at 6 a.m. And so um, that spoke in, in terms of his work ethic and mindset and approach. And that just kind of grew. And last year, I think was his first real year of getting a real opportunity. And he made the most of it. I had seven interceptions, second in the league and in, in interceptions. And when you bring in a, a free safety, a safety like this, that has the 
amazing ball skills that he has and has the confidence to do those things and is familiar with different coverages and knows how to disguise it. I mean, you got to respect it. And so uh, who he is as a football player is going to be amazing for us, but also who he is as off the field is just as important, you know, in terms of his work ethic and how tough and grit, gritty he is. That, that's great. That's just great stuff to hear. So, I mean, you know, you, you lose a guy like Cheeto on the back end, but you, you, you get a guy – similar i mean the same yeah. type of same type of makeup same type of character you know and and yep. uh the chemistry and the character still still all going to be there and and you talk about a guy that you know in at six in the morning uh waking up to work out von bell is resigned he's a 5 a.m workout guy you know he's the one that that started the uh the the day off meetings the defensive backs have and uh mike hilton continued to have that but but von bell they also signed at the safety position he he's got that kind of uh that kind of mentality to him. And both of these guys are tremendous communicators, you know, and you can't have enough of that on the back end. I mean, with everything all these NFL teams are doing with personnel and formations and everything, it's been, you have to have your eyes dotted and your T's crossed. You you have to see it and communicate it quickly. I mean, if it's yeah. like, oh, yeah, I saw it, but I didn't get it out in time. Too late, man. That doesn't help yeah, either, you know? Yeah, it doesn't help anybody. And so right. that's the thing, man, that, uh, that you know, I, I really uh, – I, I, I haven't had a chance to meet Vaughn in person, uh, just have, you know, heard what other people have said, as you just said, those are the things that he's bringing to the table that are going to help everyone out. You know, I think of guys like Jordan Battle who are going to really benefit from, yep. you know, being able to be around a Vaughn Bell. And so yep. uh, when you have that type of veteran like leadership and, you know, that veteran like uh, presence on the field as well and the way that they communicate, I mean, man, sky's the limit. I, I like, I, I really like the the moves that our front office and, and uh, our coaches have made, man, and ownership. I, I, I think they're setting us up for success. No doubt. I mean, you look at it, um, teammate, like like you and Gino were teammates. And, and, and then, of course, Bengals re-up Cody Ford, give him an extension. That's a big deal, yeah. you know, yep. helping with the depth and the versatility of, mm -hmm. uh, of personnel that, of, of, of positions that, uh, that, that, uh, can be handled by Cody Ford. So yep. with with, uh, with Von Bell, Trey Hendrickson, they were teammates with the Saints. And another guy the Bengals signed, Sheldon Rankins, was with yep. the Saints. Those three guys all played together. How big is that? I mean, it's yep. it's not like you can't form good bonds with new teammates and all that. But the fact that you're running it back with guys that you've had success, playoff team success with, how big mm -hmm. is that to rejoin forces, man? Yeah, well, it definitely gives uh, the player more comfort. You know, when you come into a situation with a familiar face, uh, you know, you can somewhat ask the questions you want to ask or, you know, maybe get the real for uh, whatever you're looking for. And so um, right. I think Sheldon is another guy, man, that's going to come in and, and be extremely dominant for us. You know, what the way that the way that uh, our rush plans have been defensively, the way Lou gets these guys going, um, I mean, and – you know, Trey Hendrickson with, with his presence, I mean, having a, a guy like Sheldon, man, who's going to be able to win those one-on-one -on -one matchups more often than not at that three-technique position is going to help everybody out on the field, but especially Trey Hendrickson. No doubt. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, they're, they're losing a guy like DJ Reader. He goes to the Detroit Lions. I mean, that's a loss on multiple levels like we've already talked about. Not only what he did on the football field for the Bengals at an extremely high level, you know, yeah. as a player, but in the locker room, in the community. I mean, DJ Reader, like yourself, is just one of these special human beings, you know, and uh, replacing a guy like that's difficult. You, but you have so many guys like that. It, it, the, yeah. the, the roster on this football team, I think the personnel department, the coach has done such a great job. And like you talked about when you had your meetings at the Combine and the interviews and everything, they have really done a good job of, of pinpointing this guy fits what we're trying to do. This guy fits our cu culture. He's going to be great for our team chemistry. They put the bat on the ball big time in that area. Yeah, yeah, they have, man. And so, you know, when you're when you're building a team, you know, obviously culture is is important. And we have a great locker room culture here. We've got a really close locker room. And, you know, it starts with Joe uh, and how he is and his personality and all that just kind of trickles down to – the other leaders and other position groups. And so, um, you know, I feel like they've paid really close attention to that. So you're, you're in Cincinnati, you're already, you know, doing your workouts, getting, getting, uh, getting everything together. How does your off season 
uh, layout. You, you got some travel plans. Uh, you're going to rest the mind and body a little bit. What's what's your off season look like for for Big O? Yeah, yeah, no, man. I mean, OTA start here soon, so I'll yep. be be up at the facility pretty much every day. Uh, as I have been now, um, you know, yep. doing that stuff. I'll be going to more Reds games. I uh, can't wait to can't wait to go to some more Reds games. There you go. Uh, we just took a trip to Aspen a few weeks ago, me and the family. Cool. So cool. that was that was awesome. No skiing or snowboarding, but uh, <laughs> it's a lot of shopping and eating. But um, that's uh, that's really it, man. I I, uh, I struggle with it now uh, in my career because, man, I just I, I love the game so much and I'm so appreciative. I know it's not going to be here forever. And so, you know, man, I just I, I really want to make the most of it. And so I struggle getting away from it, if that, <laughs> if that makes sense at times. <laughs> I, I know. I mean, I I, I, yeah. I can envision your mindset because mine was very similar to what you're it's like, you know, the game. I'm so thankful the game because it's given me so much. So yeah. I can give it everything I possibly can because it's exactly. given me so much. I got to reciprocate, man. I got to try exactly. to give it everything I can. I got to try to give my team, you know, everything I can. And uh, I'll yeah. tell you, there's no, we've talked about this before. I mean, the offensive line, that, that unit, that group, it's just, it's different. You know, I mean, it's just yeah. the, the, the chemistry, the relationships, everything that develops within the offensive line is kind of like the team within the team, right? Yeah, it is. It is, man. And, and you know, I, I always use the example of it's it's more militant than any other position group. You know, it's more uh, it's 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 levels. And so, you know, it's it's uh, your stripes are earned and it's it's a militant like approach up front in terms of our chemistry. And so, you know, you've got your foot soldiers, whoever those may be. You've got your tone setters. You've got your leadership general captains and, uh, you know, your your old line coach is uh, the head man. And so, you know, it's it's uh, it's so interesting in terms of the intricacies of, of the position and the position group. Speak about the, the old line coach, the, the, the head man, Frank Pollock. What what has yeah. he meant to your career and and, and with the talent, with four Super Bowl winners? Yeah. For the Cincinnati Bengals, four players that have got the ring, baby, and that's yeah. what I mean. And, and then Frank's coordinating everybody's effort. What, what, what are your expectations? I mean, what, do you, what are you looking for, big man? Yeah, no, man. I mean, Frank's Frank's played a huge part of my my success uh, in my career last year. I, I just, I really, I really appreciate everything uh, Frank's approach. You know, and it's not a lot of offensive line coaches that I would say have a humble approach have an understanding for uh, their personnel and and don't try to make guys into something that they aren't. And I feel like that's the one thing that Frank does an amazing job at is he lets you be you and he allows you to skin a cat more than, you know, one way. And when you're an offensive lineman, it always helps so much with confidence and development. And so I, uh, I just I've, I've got so much respect for him and his knowledge about the game and his insight. You know, he's coached some great players uh, during his time as well. And so uh, he's he's been a, a huge help for me over the last year, man, just really getting to know him and, and understand offensive line play and, and his viewpoint a lot better. You know, when you when you talk about Frank and his and his approach, having played the game, having been a yeah. pro in the NFL for nine years himself, I mean, he understands. You know, it's like what you're talking about makes so much sense because everybody's body is different. It's not yeah. cookie cutter. You know, yeah. some guys have long arms, some guys have short arms, some guys have long trunks, some guys have short trunks, long yeah. legs, short legs. So <clears throat> if you have all these different body types, why do you think it's like this is the only way to do it? This is what you have to do from a technique standpoint. This is it, period. Well, man, yeah. there are so many different body why not adapt him to what that guy can and can't do with respect to his body type? I mean, his approach makes so much sense, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It does. And that's, you know, why, you know, guys like Ted have been able to come here and play some of their best ball in their career. Um, Alex Kappa, um, myself, uh, Trenton here soon. Uh, it's it's it, it gives you that raw confidence that you need, you know, that allows you to go out there and just play with your muscle memory and take that time and practice to work on these different techniques to learn what fits your body and play style and type the best. Well, big man, can't thank you enough for the time that you carved out for us. I mean, you, you're outstanding. And, uh, man, not, not just the Cincinnati Bengals, but the city of Cincinnati and all of Bengal Nation, they know 
how lucky they are to have you a part of the organization. And uh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm holding the flag to lead that parade. No question. I'm, I'm a big fan of yours, Big O. You're the best. No, I feel the same way, Lap, about you, man. Thank you so much, man. And, you know, obviously what you've done for the city over the years, I mean, I I hope the grades just as much. I'll say that. <laughs> Appreciate yes, you. Enjoy course. the offseason. Uh, and, and I know you will. Take take it as an opportunity to get better. It's always, always there for us, right? Yes, sir. Have a great one, Stud. Absolutely. Thank you. Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team.